comes back to Richard. And even though the idea of crossing them in the dark sounds completely fucking stupid, Addie is insistent that they don't stop. Right, and she's the last person that anybody's going to question, so better do it. Right. Well, I mean, (laughs) who better to teach you than the lady with one foot who made just a slight mistake that one time? Let's be real. I get that she was comfortable in the past. I do. She had all her bones. She's used to it. But we've been walking in the past for a minute, right? I wouldn't sleep in here. No, no, obviously. Well, after the shadow people? Fuck no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no chance. Maybe you could see doing it near Addie's home if you hadn't seen the shadow people and didn't know you were in the past. But other than that, no, no, no fucking chance. And she obviously did know about them, and she knew about the grippers when she took a nap, too. So it's sad, and it sucks. But Addie, you kind of deserve to lose that. <laughs> Well, I hate saying that she deserved it, but she definitely earned it. I'm just saying, like, you don't need to go that deep in there. Why'd you have to go deep enough that you were so tired? Were you going to the Midlands? Don't think so. Wasn't she crossing it? I assumed she was crossing it. So she was making this two-day and one-night journey. I thought she was just going into the boundary to, like, get bones. Oh, that could very well be. We may have to look back this time and see exactly if it said what she was doing in there. Yeah, because Hmm. maybe she should get a friend to, like, assist her. (laughs) (laughs) But this warning is definitely going to be enough to keep Richard moving. (laughs) So much so that Caitlin had to grab him and alert him when she notices a shadow not ten yards behind them in the trail. It wasn't moving, and they could see through it like smoke. They walk away, trying to make sure it's not going to move, and as soon as they're around the corner, they, like, book it, (laughs) as you would, if you're, you know, being weirdly chased by shadow people, because these people are moving at some point, because they just walked through that path, you know what I mean? So, at some point, when they weren't looking, these things just appear behind them, so that's creepy as fuck. Right, and they only appeared not ten yards away. Which, if you think about it, is only about ten paces. So it's pretty fucking close, too. They just walked through here. Right. I would book it, too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So Richard asks if these could possibly be Panis' shadow people. Whew. Got through the first one. Okay. (laughs) Penis. Kaylin tells him, I'm not really sure... They existed before I was born, and in all the stories, they just kind of float along, not just sit there. So this is not that, but it's also still very weird. Right. And Richard's like, maybe it's because of the bones. Maybe they're leaving us alone because of the bones. Like, they can see us, or no, like they know we're here, but they can't see us. And that is not comforting, really, to Caitlin at all. No. (laughs) You are being hunted. They just don't know exactly where you are. Why wouldn't Richard be a little bit more pissed at Addie right now? Kaylin doesn't have any knowledge of these things. Addie warned them pretty fucking clearly about the grippers. Stay the hell away. They did mention dead people inside the boundary wanting you to come into the boundary to them. These are not those things. Yeah, I thought it was weird. First of all, that heart hounds didn't come out as soon as it got dark like that just came as a little bit of a surprise to me because i thought they were like sitting and waiting inside the boundary well that's what happened before right yeah i feel like Addie was like yeah there be shit that live in the boundary then she was like grippers (laughs) and she didn't like elaborate on any of the other things that they could run into and i mean she has bones so she didn't explain what the bones came from either Right, or what they would really keep them safe from. She just said beasts and the boundary. Well, these things are not beasts. They don't have bones. (laughs) God damn it, Addie. According to Kaylin. But yeah, I just... And they're obviously scared out of their goddamn mind. Kaylin just brushes up against a branch from a tree and flips the fuck out because she's terrified. Richard, he feels like panicking, but he knows he's got to keep it real cool. (laughs) (laughs) Otherwise, it would probably just make things worse. 
And so they're dealing with a situation. They don't have any other choice. But Addie seriously dropped the ball in like, hey, these are the things that this can protect you from because they don't know whether or not they're really safe from these things. Right. The preparation side of this was maybe not the greatest. Right. (laughs) At this point, they're walking through. There's tons of trees on the side of the pass. It's getting dark, and they can't really tell if they're trees or shadow people. Twice, they're close enough to where they have no doubt. They know that they're shadow people, and they still don't move, but they feel like they're watching them. I think I'd come dangerously close to stabbing a tree. You know, like when you're not sure, is that a shadow person or a tree? And you get closer and closer and you can't veer off to the other side and avoid it. You have to take exactly the path that's in front of you. And you're like, oh, my God, that's a person. That's a person. That's a person. You get your knife or the fucking sword of truth out and you swing and you cut right into the trunk of a tree. And you're like, oh, thank God. (laughs) Just scare you out of your goddamn mind. You know, your point about Addie... Is a good one, though, because, like, at this point, the pass is lined with trees or shadow people. Right. And shoulder to shoulder. Right. There's a lot of them. (laughs) And she wasn't like, so it's going to be kind of weird, kind of like a cult processional where you're walking through all these weird, dark things. It'll be fine. Just keep walking. (laughs) Like, she didn't give him any instruction on this terrifying part of the journey. Right. And so all Richard can do is say that, If they come for us, I'm going to fucking cut them with the sword, and that'll be that. Hopefully, it'll work. I mean, it worked before, so let's just hope it's going to work this time. And Kaylin's like, hey, if these are shadow people, just them touching you will kill you. They don't have to bite you or attack you and kill you in the normal sense. All they have to do is reach out and touch you, and you're a dead man. So let's not let them do that while we're at all of this. And even if they're not shadow people, probably not a great idea. So just, like, don't let them touch you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep them off. They have the sick. <laughs> Let's keep them off of us. Which I get the common sense about, like, okay, we're going to say this out loud. Don't let them fucking touch you. But, like, I wouldn't want them to touch me anyways. Like, I don't feel like you would have to tell me that. Like, no, the the goal, okay, is to not have them touch me. It's to not be touched. <laughs> Let's get through this untouched, Okay. <laughs> Richard does hear, like, a weird rasping noise that he doesn't recognize, and I feel like I would be more creeped out about it. Oh, for sure. Well, especially, you can't see anything. It's getting dark, and you hear this weird noise. Could be the shadow people, but you're not really sure, you know? And the thing that got me is it's getting louder. Yeah. Which is freaky, because you would assume that means it's getting closer, and if it's getting closer and you can't see it, It has the advantage over you, and you're in the dark, and you're terrified. Right, and at this point, it says that he resists the urge to take the sword out. Apparently, because he's worried there's going to be too many guys, or the sword won't work. I think he's assuming they're going to be triggered by him pulling it out. And he decides he's only going to take it out if he has no choice, but his instinct is telling him not to do it yet. I feel like my sword or a bow, something would have been out this whole time (laughs) it would have been out when they started getting into this the first shadow person you would have probably had your sword out why would you even hesitate it's like i get swords are like bigger heavier more cumbersome but if you had a gun you for sure would have pulled that shit out like first thing maybe but then again you see these weird shadow people in the woods and there is perceived threat so they're not attacking you They're letting you pass. They're for sure scary as hell. But if they're not trying to come after you, then maybe leaving the sword away is a sign of goodwill. Like, hey, I'm just walking and I'm not going to bother you. Don't bother me. Maybe they really don't give a fuck as long as he just leaves them alone. You know what I mean? There's certain countries that you just can't go to because those people will fucking kill you. There's an island of them, though. They've been, yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. Just leave us alone. But if you're just going through, we won't bother you. And so as long as he leaves that sword in its scabbard, he's not presenting a threat to these weird shadow people and they won't attack him. That's the only reason I would see to leave your sword in. That being said, 
my sword would have been out immediately like you. <laughs> okay, I feel like maybe you're right. And swords are different because with a gun, I would be like pointed at the ground, you know? Like, I will lower my weapon, but I will not put it away. You can see its presence, but it's not pointed at you. Right. With a sword, you have to get close anyways. So you're like, Oof. Yeah, right. It's up and ready <laughs> to go. Yeah, you're always in the in the ready position. So I guess I I guess I can see that. I just I don't know. I I wouldn't be super confident. And I get Kaylin is like, "All right, man, if if that's what you think, I will I will agree with you." And Richard's like, "I don't really, but yeah, yeah, we'll be fine." But this is what we're going to do. <laughs> and you know what we're going to do? What's that, JD? Take a break. Well, all right. <laughs> we're going to go get another refill. And we'll be back right after this. And we're back. So at this point, Kaylin asks Richard to take out the Nightstone because she can hardly see shit around her. Richard is not really sure about doing it yet because he doesn't think it's a necessity and he's kind of afraid of what's going to happen. The shadows have kind of stayed still this whole time and he kind of thinks maybe they can't see them. But if he takes out the stone, they might be able to see the light from that right it kind of goes back to what we were talking about just a little bit ago they haven't attacked them yet so he doesn't really want to change anything because they're letting them go up until this point there's no actual threat they're scary but they're just standing there which is whatever (laughs) but if i pull the stone out or pull the sword out maybe that'll egg him on and so he's hesitant to do it i get his reasoning but at the same time kaylin's not wrong you can't go on blind. You're definitely going to run into the boundary then. Right. And one thing it hasn't said yet is that can you see this green thing at night? I kind of assumed that there was a path that you can see here. Off to the sides is the green thing. So I feel like it has to be super dark for you to just go off the path. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but I don't know. I think maybe the boundary is something that glows, so maybe at nighttime it's easier to see. But what Richard says effectively gets Kaylin to shut the fuck up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yes it does. She bites her lip in worry, and they make their way through the trees and boulders and keep walking. The soft scraping sound is getting nearer all around them. Don't like that. Right. Now it's a scraping sound. Before it was a rasping, which is creepy enough in the dark. I've experienced something like this, and I don't like it. Well, you can't just leave it at that. What are you talking about? Actually, it was a little creepier than this. When we were camping, because I feel like we weren't even far away from our house, and um, there was, it was pitch dark, and there was a lady in the next campground over who had a stoma, and she started calling Jade out in the middle of the night, and it was the creepiest shit I've ever lived through. They had somebody in their campground named Jade. I had forgotten, and I lost my shit. (laughs) (laughs) So rasping? Like, she rasped. That's why this came up, because she was also rasping during all of that. And that was creepy enough, but when she started calling my name, I was like... She was saying your name, exactly. That's not... Just a small detail. That's pretty fucking big. Something is out there and it's speaking directly to me. <laughs> yeah, out of the darkness. And my name is not like super common either. So Right. <laughs> but but rasping is bad enough. That's all I'm saying. I don't like the dark and I don't like rasping in the dark. And now it's a clawing noise. And now it's a soft scraping sound. And Richard realizes that it sounds like fucking claws on rock, which Super specific thing for him to realize. I had the exact same thought. I was like, really? Couldn't be rock on rock or wood on rock. No, that's a claw. That's a claw on a rock. I wish we had some type of context for how he knows it's claw on rock, but moving on. (laughs) Two shadows stand in front of them. The path is between them, and Kaylin presses herself up against Richard with her face buried in his chest. And he holds her, and she holds her breath. They both hold their breath, and they, like, squeeze through these guys, and they're both terrified. And it seems it seems like it's getting a little intense at this point. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're pressed up against each other. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> but stay focused on the shadow people. Yeah. 
Yeah, I feel like he wasn't that. No, I don't know what I'm going to say. What it is, is the worst, worst time for Richard to get a boner. <laughs> <laughs>